this short video, we're going to show you how to set up closed loop Lambda in the Max ECU. The first section we'll cover is the type of Lambda sensor and when it works. So you have a choice of several external Lambda sensors. These will be used in the analog input of your choice. In this video, we're going to shoot, choose the internal wideband controller. Um, the sport, street, and race all have a single sensor. And then the pro has two sensors. In which, if you do use two sensors, you can select which bank or which cylinders are with each sensor. Okay, so we'll go to single sensor for this video. The ECU kit will ship by default. The premium kits ship with the LSU 4.2 sensor. It will work with a 4.9 sensor. That is an option. That is why we have made the 4.2 setting the default in all of our base maps. When do you want the sensor to heat up? When do you want it to start working? When the ECU turns on or when the engine starts up? The reason we made this, an, uh, this a choice was when you're setting up the engine and you're first starting things up and you're doing cold start and other tuning initially, you want the, the wideband to turn on when the ECU turns on so you're not waiting for it. After things get calibrated, the initial startup gets calibrated, and you leave the key on for a long period of time while you're making changes or doing data logging stuff, you want to change this to e engine startup. This will save the battery so the, the ECU is not constantly uh, using the, the heater for the wideband. The calibration on a new sensor, leave this the default calibration. As the sensor ages, you know, depending upon the fuel type, is it leaded or unleaded, um, you'll want to change this to a manual free air calibration. You can do this actually any time. Um, you'll want to set the sensor in free air, and you will want to let it sit there for four or five minutes with a heater on and make sure it's on a clear, sunny day. You don't want it raining. You don't want a, a low front or, you know, any, any, any weird weather outside because the sensor needs to be calibrated for oxygen. And a sunny day with perfect weather is the best time to do this. After it's heated up and it's sitting in fresh air for a long time, you hit calibrate sensor and then the EC will learn that new value. Next, we will go to the actual control using these settings. So we'll turn this into wideband. And now we have our, all of our settings as they relate to how the ECU will use the wideband sensor in closed loop mode. Maximum TPS delta, what does this mean? So this is the change of TPS over time. So this is how fast you open the throttle. The reason this setting is here, and this setting can be data logged in the ECU, is you do not want the ECU applying closed loop corrections during transients. So we have other settings in the ECU for this. So we don't want the closed loop settings to affect that. This is the same thing for manifold pressure. As the manifold pressure changes, that's what max map delta means. What is the maximum change in the manifold pressure sensor over time do you want before the ECU actually starts applying corrections? This also helps in turning the closed loop off during transients. Okay, Minimum coolant temp, that's self-explanatory. You don't want closed loop lambda correcting during warm up. So we have warm-up tables that are coolant-based and time-based to handle this. Minimum engine run time. So race cars that don't use coolant temp sensors or don't have uh, motorcycles that don't have coolant in them at all, uh, this will help allow you to use your, your warm-up tables that expire over time. So this allows the engine to warm up, build, build some heat, uh, and this, will, this is just a simple timer that expires, and in 15 seconds, closed loop will start working. If any of these conditions are violated, how long do you want the ECU to wait before it activates closed loop again? And that's what this setting is for. So this would be a tenth of a second uh, delay. So after these conditions are violated and then everything comes back into normal conditions again, it will wait a tenth of a second before it turns closed loop on again. Controller frequency. What is that? 
This is how many times per second the ECU will sample the wideband sensor. It's logical that at lower engine RPMs, we don't need to sample the wideband sensor very frequently. At higher RPMs, we need to sample the sensor a lot more frequently as more combustion events are happening. So just as a reference, 12,000 RPMs, I bumped it up to 20 hertz or 20 times per second. Regulator gain is how much of the calculated correction do you want me to apply on the next engine cycle? Let me explain. So if the ECU has calculated we need 10% more fuel, this will multiply that by 20%. So of a 10% correction, we're only actually going to get 2% of it. Or in other words, if, if an ECU is saying, I need to add 10 milliseconds of fuel to achieve your desired air fuel target, this is only going to allow it to apply 2 milliseconds. The reason this is here is so you can smooth the air fuel line or the data log as it applies to the corrections being applied. Let me show you. So if I put 200% in there, that is going to apply 200% of the correction it's calculated on the next engine cycle. That's too much. So then it's going to take away 200% on the following engine cycle. So your wideband is going to continually oscillate for a very long time because this correction is too high. Most applications I recommend, recommend between 20 and 50 is a good starting point. The faster your engine accelerates, this obviously will need to be changed. So this is how much of the correction do I want to apply on the next engine cycle. N max negative correction is exactly what it states. So this will, this will, I set these symmetrically normally when I'm starting off. So negative 20 and positive 20. So that allows you to set the mins and max that uh, the closed loop lambda is allowed to correct for. And of course, as with all max ECU tables, these variables can be anything you want them to be. The X and the Y axis can be anything you want them to be. And then you can also add a fourth axis if you would like. So if you, um, uh, in a nitrous application, if you have a bottle pressure sensor and you want to allow the ECU to have more corrections as the bottle pressure drops, you can add a fourth dimension to calculate, to give you more correction tables for this. The last thing we cover in the closed loop lambda strategy is the use of the lambda target table. This is the table you will go in to adjust your target lambda. This is what the ECU uses to, to control the wideband. The wideband uses to control the fuel pulses uh, being used by the ECU. So whatever you set in here, this is, your, this is what you want to happen. It compares that to what actually happens and makes changes based upon what you have set in the Lambda control. As with all tables in the Max ECU, any axis can be any variable. So this axis can be RPM, you know, this axis can be throttle position if you want it to be. One of the newer features uh, a few releases ago, you're able to actually configure the cells for people who want to have nice even distribution of of the numbers, you see the cell division is going to be 11.1% TPS breaks on each breakpoint. If you change this, it will actually show you that now each division will be 10% 10, 10 throttle position. But that's a nice feature. And then, of course, all tables can have a fourth dimension, which is very nice. In this, in this uh, example, we've chose ethanol concentration. So you can see there are two lambda values for the different ethanol concentrations. Of course, these are unrealistic. It's just set for examples. But that's how the closed loop lambda works. And thanks for choosing Max ECU.